Alright, so carrying on with our rugby example, um, we can see that we've generated a bit of information out of Insight with our box and whisker graph, stop plots, and statistics there. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is our analysis. And remember, your analysis here is going to be all about the sample. So it's really important. This whole section is about what you observe from your sample data. And so you have to be very clear not to talk about the population at all in this case. So there's a few things we're going to talk about, um, and we'll look at center first. So the center is the difference between the medians, or in the case that you decide to investigate the means, it could also be the difference between the means. And so we're actually just going to look at our data at the very basic level and just state exactly what the difference is between the means of the sample of both of our groups. So we can get this. Um, by looking at our data here, and our medians, sorry, not means, medians, are 92 for the backs and 110.5 for the forwards. And remember, this is the weight of the rugby players in kilograms. So my median weight back and my median weight for the forward. So I'm going to talk about this in terms of the two different groups, make sure that we're specific. The forwards median weight, 110.5 kilograms from my sample is 18.5 kilograms higher than the back's median weight of 92. So there you're giving your evidence, which is the numbers, basically. And they're being really specific in this case also to talk about our variable, as well as make sure that we get our groups, our forwards, and our backs and then they do have the statistic there as well. So here, in this case, we're talking about the medians, and they've been clear to talk about only the sample. So had you been looking at the means, then you would have compared the means as well. And again, this is just for the basics, so we're kind of just writing down where we're at with it, which is exactly that the forward's median weight is exactly 18.5 kilograms higher than the back's median weight. And moving on to the next step, we talk about that in a little bit more detail, but we will get there to look at the, the higher level stuff. So carrying on with just the basics here, um, the next thing we're going to look at is shift in overlap. And this is of the middle 50%. And remember on your box and whisker graphs, the middle 50% is the box. So you have to be talking about, w when I want you to use the words middle 50%, not the box. So here we're going to state the middle 50%, um, which middle 50% sits higher, and the size of any overlap between the boxes. So if we come back up and look at our graph, we notice that the middle 50% of the forwards and the middle 50% of the backs, rugby players, actually are not overlapped at all, and I can see that there's a gap between them here. So there's no overlap. If I were to take this box and try to slide it straight down, it would not land on top of the back. So I have a lot of overlap. Sorry, I have no overlap here, and in fact I have quite a lot of shift, because you can imagine that this one is what we would say shifted. Um, shifted up the scale to the heavier weights. So it's like somebody's pushed the forward box and whisker graph up the graph a little bit. So again in this case there's no overlap between the boxes and we do have one shifted slightly further up the scale. So the middle 50% being specific what I'm talking about of the forwards weights, so again here I've got my groups, the forwards weights and the variable is between 104.8 kilograms and 117 kilograms. So it's comfortably to the right of the middle 50% of the back's weights between 88 kilograms and 95.5 kilograms. There's no overlap between the, here I would actually just clarify that and say between the middle 50%. So just to give you guys a little um, update on shift and overlap if it's not something that you would have done recently. Um, just to remind you guys of this, so shift and overlap is looking at the box and whisker graph and if I have box A we'll start with this example and box B here I would say that there is no shift and complete overlap. Again, because if I took this um, 
Let's see if I can do this for you. If I took this box and tried to slide it straight down, it would actually land straight on top of the box below. So box A would land straight on top of box B. So there is overlap between them. But there is no shift because A is not shifted further up the scale, for instance. So if that's A and this is B, then again in this case there's no shift and complete overlap. If we look at another example, Here I'm going to be able to say that A is shifted slightly further up the scale. So A is shifted, and again you're only looking at the box, or the middle 50% shifted, um, slightly up the scale. And words like slightly and sort of and lots and general terms are quite good to use, slightly up the scale. And here I could say that there is some overlap between them, because again if I take box A and I slide it down, it actually overlaps them. So I leave that here for a second. You can see that there's an overlap of the middle 50% there. So again here we would say that there is um, some overlap. So some overlap of the middle 50% percent. And you could go further to say it's about half the box, about half the middle 50 percent of each overlap. Um, and you could even go so far as to give numbers if you felt like it between where those overlaps are. So again in this case both those boxes kind of fall between those lines with a lot of overlap. And here we see there's quite a bit of overlap but it's not complete. It's about half overlap. And as the last example, of course, would be kind of like what we looked like, looked at. Yeah. We'll do this one the opposite way around than what the example is. So keep in mind the bottom graph can go further ahead as well. So here, if I'm looking at this, I would say that B is shifted up the scale and there is no overlap in this case. So you could think about visualizing B. could be back here but it's getting shifted further up the scale and there's no overlap between them because I can slide those directly past each other in the middle 50 percent. The boxes do not overlap at all. So here we've got no overlap and B is shifted further up the scale. So that would be a general way to talk about your shift in your middle 50 percent. And what this is telling us is kind of, you know, the general idea of how similar or dissimilar our samples are. Because if we have no shift and complete overlap, we could say, well, you know, kind of the middle 50%, the kind of average data on both of these sets is, is pretty similar to each other. They're, they're not that different. So these ones are, you know, relatively similar. Here we start to see some slight difference between them, and here we can see that there is, you know, seems to be a difference between the two samples because I, I, in the middle 50%, which again is where the average is, where kind of most the standard, like, you know, the, the typical numbers would be for, for instance, weights of backs or forwards, you can see that there's actually no overlap there in this particular case. Um, so we'd suggest, or kind of, it would suggest that things are slightly a bit different between the samples. And in this gray area, somewhere in between, you know, we could see that maybe A is slightly, but it's hard to tell because there's still a lot between A and B that are similar. So this one is um, kind of a gray area, it's the middle ground between those two. Between it being relatively similar and being, you know, seems to be different or relatively dissimilar. So that's our shift and overlap. 
So again, what they've said, the middle 50% of the forward's weights between this and this, that 104.8 and the uh, 117, where does it come from? 104.8 and 117, that's your first quartile and your third quartile, so your upper and lower quartile. And here we have the 104.8 and 117. And they also give the same values for the backs as well, the 88 and the 95.5. So again, you can see there's no overlap in that particular case. So this would suggest that in these samples that there seems to be a difference between the weights, where the forwards seem to be a bit heavier in weight than the backs.